welcome dear students 2021 units 5 and 6 numerical analysis paper cc 14 semester 6 bc honors mathematics university of calcutta question paper 2021 unit 5 question 12 a what do you mean by the partial pivoting in solving a system of linear n linear equations in n unknowns what are the reasons for such pivoting question b compute the total number of arithmetic operations multiplications and divisions or divisions in gaussian algorithm for solving an n by n system of linear equations the non zero elements by assumption a111 a222 annn actually this is the principal uh, diagonal <coughs> elements uh, for this at the n minus 1 step of the Gaussian Gauss elimination method are known as pivots and the corresponding equation are called pivotal equation if a i i at the i iteration for the iteration i is either 0 or very small compared to the other coefficients in the ith column then we find the largest element in magnitude in the ith column and interchange the two rows. In this way, we obtain a non zero pivot. Such a process is called partial pivoting. Thus, choose j for which modulus of aj, ajk for k iteration equal to maximum of modulus aik for the k iteration k less than equal to i less than equal to n and interchange rows k and j second part of this question what are the reason for such pivoting if the pivot that is the main element of this uh, um, row is zero or very close to zero then the entire process of the gauss elimination method fails the problem can be avoided with the help of the partial pivoting process. Uh, note that uh, what is the complete pivoting? If we search both column and row for the largest element, actually pivoting is the largest element of that column in magnitude, the process is known as complete pivoting. Thus, we choose L and M such that modulus of A L M at the kth iteration equal to maximum of modulus aig for the kth iteration where k less than equal to i and j less than equal to n so i and j both lies between k and n closed interval and interchange row k and l and the columns k and n if the matrix a is diagonally dominant or real symmetric and positive defined then no pivoting is necessary this is the complete pivoting next question b compute the total number of arithmetic operations multiplication and division in gaussian algorithm for solving n by n system of linear equations operational count for gaussian elimination number of division in the first step equal to n minus 1 number of division in the second step n minus 2 number of division in the n minus 1 at step is 1 so total number of division is n into n minus 1 by 2 and similarly and multiplication is this total number of multiplication n by 3 n plus 1 into n minus 1 again for back substitution number of divisions equal to n and number of multiplication multiplications is n by 2 into n minus 1 so operational count that is division and multiplication and this total number of divisions plus total number of multiplication and this after simplification we get n cube by 3 plus n square minus n by 3. Also note that this total number of addition and subtractions 
is n by 6 into n minus 1 into 2n plus 5. Question 13. So that for solving a system of linear equations by a suitable iterative method, a sufficient condition is that the system should be diagonally dominant. Is it possible that some system which is not diagonally dominant may converge to its solution by the iterative method justified? Actually, solving system of linear equations by suitable iterative method, a sufficient conditions is that system should be diagonally dominant. This question. Uh, answer and find uh, the solution the previous uh, video 2022 paper cc 14 unit 5 question number 12 right up to the equation 9 that is equation 9 is this and summation g equal to 1 to n modulus of a i g less than modulus of a i i for all i i not equal to g this equation 1 9 right this up to equation 9 uh, so to get the answer for the for the first part and for the second part is it possible that some system which is not diagonal dominant may converge to its solution by the iterative method justified actually this uh, condition this coefficient matrix is strictly diagonal dominant that is equation 9 hold uh, then the iteration method gauss cdl or gauss jacobi iteration converges this is the sufficient condition for this convergence of this iteration method but if the iteration converges then the coefficient matrix may not be strictly diagonal dominant hence the strictly diagonal dominant is a sufficient condition but not necessary condition for the convergence of any iteration method consider an example this minus 4x1 plus 5x2 equal to 1 x1 plus 2x2 equal to 3 Obviously, system is not strictly diagonal dominant because this equation a11 modulus value of a1 is 4 and this uh, which is greater modulus value of this 5 is greater and not a11 is the greater a11 modulus of a11 is not greater now other some of the other uh, element modulus of other uh, elements so this system is not strictly diagonal dominant now we can write this above equations um, um, for cost cd iteration x1 r plus 1 equal to minus 1 by 4 plus 5 by 4 x2 r for the other iteration and x2 r plus 1 equal to 3 by 2 minus x1 r plus 1 by 2 r equal to 0 1 to this taking the initial approximation x1 0 x2 0 equal to 0 0 the iteration converts to the solution x1 equal to 1 x2 equal to 1 and put x equal to 1 and x1 equal to 1 x2 equal to 1 uh, this equal system satisfies and consider the next example this system of three equations linear uh, equations and this uh, for the first row this a1 and modulus value of a11 there is 4 and some of the modulus value of the other elements in that row this 2 modulus of 2 modulus of minus 2 that is 4 so this a11 equal to the sum of the other uh, element, modulus of the other elements so obviously the system is not strictly diagonal dominant and taking the initial approximation x1 0 x2 0 x3 0 equal to 0 0 0 and the following iteration converges to the solution uh, you can write this equation x1 equal to this this is the r plus 1 iteration, this is the r iteration, and this gauss seidel iteration technique. And this, uh, we can find the solution x1 equal to 1, x2 equal to minus 2, x3 equal to 0. Actually, uh, we find this solution by um, C programming uh, technique. Uh, already, you know this technique. You can check this. Next question. Question 14. Obtain LU factorization of the matrix A is 411, 14, minus 2, 
3 to minus 4. Use this factorization to solve the system ax equal to 446. Actually, uh, by computer uh, C programming, uh, first we find this uh, this L U and this uh, X. Next uh, detailed calculation is this: A is this matrix uh, equal to L U. Let L equal to L one one zero zero, L two one L two two zero, L three one L three two L three three. Lower triangular matrix, and this is the upper triangular matrix with principal diagonal. Uh, elements are all one. Then uh, multiplication uh, between this L and U, we get this matrix, and this matrix is equal to A. So obviously, uh, we can equate uh, these corresponding elements. This four equal to L one one, one equal to L two one, one three equal to L three one, one equal to L one one into U one two, and so on, and we get. And uh, these equations 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. And from the equation 2, first and second equation, u12 equal to 1 by l11, and l11 is 4, so, so we get u12. And from this equation, u13 equal to 1 by l11, so l11 equal to 4, so this u13 equal to 1 by 4. And from this equation 3, uh, we find L22 actually L21 equal to 1, U12 equal to 1 by 4. So we get L22. And from uh, this equation, we find U23. And from this equation, we find L32. And this equation L33. So uh, all elements of this lower triangular matrix and upper triangular matrix uh, get this. And so L is the this lower triangular matrix and E is the upper triangular matrix. Now uh, AX equal to 446 it is given. So A equal to LU put here LU X equal to this and let this Y equal to UX. So LY equal to this. U, y equal to UX. So this implies Y1, Y2, Y3 is the column matrix this for this y and u is this and x is the column matrix x1 x2 x3 and l y equal to this so l is this y is this and 446 is the right hand side column vector so this implies i will get this three equations and solving i will get y1 equal to this y2 equal to 4 by 5 y3 equal to minus 1 by 2 and then uh, from equation 9, this uh, put this value of y1, y2, y3, and we get x1, x2, x3 by back substitution technique. And x1 equal to 1, x2 equal to half, x3 equal to minus half. Question 15. Describe the power method to calculate the numerically greatest eigenvalue of a real non-singular square matrix of order n. How do you find its numerically least eigenvalue? Uh, you can get this answer from the previous video, question number 2022, unit 5, this is 14, question 15. This power method. Second part, let A be a n by n non singular matrix and lambda be the numerically least eigenvalue of A. If AX not equal to uh, null vector, null matrix, and be the corresponding eigenvector of A, then AX equal to lambda X. This implies uh, um, composing A inverse um, both sides from the left A inverse AX equal to lambda A inverse X. So this A inverse A equal to I ID matrix. So X equal to lambda A inverse X. So obviously A inverse X equals to 1 by lambda X. Obviously lambda not equal to 0. Numerical list eigenvalue. 
not equal to zero and this because this a is non singular matrix so obviously lambda not equal to zero and this shows that one by lambda is the numerically largest eigenvalue of a with the same eigenvector x non non eigenvectors now we can apply a power method on a inverse to obtain one by lambda and x and hence lambda is the numerical least eigenvalue of the matrix a next unit 6 question 16 find the approximate solutions by picard's iteration method to the initial value problem dy dx equal to 1 plus y square with the initial condition y is equal to 0 hence find the approximate value of y at x equal to 0 0.1 and x equal to 0 0.2 dy dx equal to fxy with the initial condition yx to be equal to y0 then picard's iteration gives y r plus 1 iteration equal to y0 this y0 plus integration x0 to x this x0 to x f of x comma y r y value of the previous iteration r dx r equal to 0 1 2 this 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 so the first approximation of y1 equal to y0 so x0 here x0 is 0 so 0 to x f of x y0 so this y0 is actually initial step y0 equal to y0 this y0 so fx this the fx is the 1 plus y square so this function fxy is independent of x only uh, one um, value uh, for depend on this value y only so this x x is this x y 0 y 0 is the 0 so this 1 plus 1 plus 0 square that is 0 so you get x and similarly second approximation of y 2 is the y 0 integration 0 to x f x y 1 y 1 is x so 1 plus x square third approximation of y 3 uh, equal to x y 2 so it is 1 plus y 2 is this x plus x cube by 3 whole square so we get this then for x equal to 0 0.1 y1 first, approx first approximation at the point 0 0.1 we get this this equal to x so this equal to 0 0.1 y2 0 0.1 equal to this x plus x cube by 3 so x plus 0.1 plus 0.1 cube by 3 this and third approximation of y3 is 0 0.1 we get this result and for the point x equal to 0 0.2 Similarly, you can find first approximation, second approximation, third approximation, and these values are this. Next question. Question 17. Find the value y 0.4 using Ranjigutta method uh, of fourth order with h equal to 0 0.2, giving that dy dx equal to root of half x plus y square y 0 equal to 0 0.4, correct up to four decimal places. Here x0 equal to 0, this is 0, y0 equal to 0 0.4, a is equal to 0 0.2, x1 equal to x0 plus h, that is 0 0.2, y0.2 equal to y1, x2 equal to x1 plus h, that is 0 0.4, and y0.4 <coughs> equal to y2. fxy equal to root over of whole root over of x plus y square. So for x equal to 0 0.2, x1 equal to 0 0.2, find k1, k2, k3, k4, and lastly k1 by 6, k1 plus 2, k2 plus 2, k3 plus k4, and hence y0.2 equal to y0 plus k, and this is the value y at the point 0 0.2. And for x equal to 0 0.4, find k1, k2, k3, k4, and k equal to this then y at the point 0 0.4 equal to y1 plus k so this is the answer for this thank you for watching this video